The borders of the world are constantly changing. Empires rise and empires fall. Today, we have borders that are supposed to be respected by the leaders of every country. However, no matter how well established these borders are, history has shown that the map is bound to change. Over the last thousand years, the world map has been rewritten countless times and in ways that have changed the fate of humanity. Before we get started, let's make something clear. There is no way to pinpoint every single border shift over the past thousand years. However, there are pivotal points in history where massive sections of land have been unified under a single empire or torn apart by groups of people who wish for their group's independence. There are also time periods and regions of the world where we just don't have enough data to determine the extent of the borders of certain territories or when they've shifted. The journey we're about to take through history will make you question everything you thought you knew about the world map and what it looked like in the past. 1,000 years ago, Europe is in the Middle Ages, while the Muslim world celebrates its golden age of scientific, cultural, and economic revolution. In the Americas, the borders of major empires begin to shift as the Maya lose power. In Asia, several dynasties are in control of large areas of land, but this is nothing compared to what's to come in the following centuries under an unlikely conqueror. Middle Eastern borders look nothing like they do today. The Ghaznavid dynasty controls huge amounts of land reaching from Iran to India. Although it consists of a multitude of different peoples, the empire is unified under Persian laws and practices. In the centuries to come, this region of the world will be divided into many different territories. However, they will still be united by a common religion and belief system. Most of Central Europe is under the control of the Holy Roman Empire, which draws its eastern border to where Poland and Hungary are today and shares its western border with France. The empire also stretches from northern Italy up to the Danish border. This section of Europe is ruled by the Catholic Church, while France and the Caliphate of Cordova control much of the rest of the continent. There are smaller territories sprinkled throughout the land, but Europe is divided into only a handful of major powers. In South America, there are no countries. Instead, there are regions unified by culture spread across the continent. The largest is the Tiwanaku Empire in the Andes Mountains. The epicenter of the empire is located around Lake Titicaca, where the capital city has been built, and rituals are conducted to give thanks to the vital water source. It's estimated that the city of Tiwanaku has a population of around 50,000 people, rivaling almost any other city in the world. The empire extends from Peru down to Chile. Central America's borders are shifting at this time. The classic Maya, who dominated the region of what is now southern Mexico, Guatemala, and Belize, start to lose power. A new Mayan empire is about to emerge in the Yucatan Peninsula based around the city of Chichen Itza. In North America, many tribes spread across the lands. The Mississippian cultures are flourishing and spreading their influence throughout the center of the continent. They build the great city of Cahokia with massive mounds and platforms that erupt into the sky from the earth. The United States of America will not exist in its current form for almost a thousand more years, and at that point the indigenous people of the region will be displaced across the land as they're forced from their homes and onto reserves. A thousand years in the past, most of the continent of Africa is broken up by cultural allegiances and nomadic hunters following the migrations of animals. However, there are still major hubs spread throughout the region. A large amount of northern Africa is controlled by the Fatimid Caliphate, which spans from the Red Sea to the Atlantic Ocean. At its height, the Fatimid Caliphate encompasses parts of Egypt and Sicily, putting much of the southern Mediterranean world under its control. 900 years ago, the Middle East begins to fragment into smaller territories. China is reaching the height of its classical age. Europe is now in the High Middle Ages, and the Church is in the middle of a great schism between its Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodoxy sects. The Tiwanaku Empire has crumbled. New players are beginning to gain power in Central America. The Toltec cultures begin flourishing in Central Mexico. They're fierce warriors who build monumental architecture, including steppe pyramids and vast causeways. In the coming centuries, the Toltec people will disappear, and another powerful culture that claims to be their descendants will rule the land. East Asia is broken up into three main dynasties. They include Lao in the north, Song in the south, and Xia in the west. These three cultures will dominate much of what is China today. It's these three regions that the Silk Road seeks to reach as spices, ideas, and merchandise of these empires is sought after by many, including the people of Europe in the future. Central Asia, where Uzbekistan, China, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Mongolia, and Tajikistan are today, is dominated by the Karakitai Empire. Karakitai was founded by Yelu Dashi, who led the people of Liao out of their homeland and west across the continent when the Jin Dynasty invaded it. Parts of the Middle East have been broken up into smaller territories, but parts of North Africa still remain united under dynasties like the Almoravid dynasty who controls the vital waterway that connects the Atlantic Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea. 
This will become known as the Strait of Gibraltar, and controlling it made them incredibly powerful. The Almoravid Empire stretches from northwestern Africa into what will become southern Spain, putting its borders in two different continents. The rest of Africa is not yet unified into any other major territories, but this will change soon. European borders have not changed significantly from 100 years prior. There are some slight fluctuations in borders as kings fight one another to claim new lands. In the next century, however, an unstoppable force will sweep across the Asian continent and into Europe. Everything is about to change forever. 800 years ago. The year is 1206. Genghis Khan has become the ruler of the Mongols. Over the next 100 years, his realm will extend further than any empire in history. Entire cities will burn and borders will be erased as the Mongols conquer every province they pass through. Simultaneously, changes are occurring in a faraway land. Over the course of the 13th century, the Mongols extend their empire from East Asia all the way across the continent. From their humble beginnings when Genghis Khan unified several nomadic tribes in Northeast Asia, the Mongol Empire managed to conquer everything from the Arctic regions of Russia to Eastern Europe. Their Mongol riders and soldiers cannot be stopped. Genghis Khan's descendants will continue to extend the empire over the next 100 years. By the end of the 1200s, the Mongol Empire reaches its peak. However, by the next century, its borders become fragmented, and the realm is split into several different kingdoms ruled by the grandchildren of Genghis Khan and influential Mongol leaders. It was through decisive military action and the ability to move quickly across great distances that allowed the Mongols to secure such a vast empire. But this exact advantage has led to the empire overextending itself, leading to the instability which resulted in fragmentation. The world borders of Asia and Eastern Europe are all influenced by the Mongols during this period of history. In Southeast Asia, a different type of empire is being built based around Buddhism. The Srivijaya Empire consists of what would become Malaysia and Indonesia. This kingdom isn't built using military force or conquest, but by seafaring people spreading the idea of Buddhism across the region. The borders of the empire extend into the Indian Ocean, and many islands in the area become part of the Sri Vijaya sphere of influence. In Africa, an old kingdom has slowly expanded its borders. The Ghana Empire now dominates Western Africa. Its borders extend through several of today's African countries, with the majority of the empire being in what's now Mali and Mauritania. Surprisingly, the Ghana Empire never actually reaches what is the country of Ghana today. The area is unified under trading partnerships that center around copper, gold, and ivory. The rulers are the only people in the empire legally allowed to hold gold, which they stockpile in their palaces. Word of the vast wealth of the Ghana Empire eventually reaches North Africa and Europe. Trade routes are open to different parts of the region, but eventually civil war tears the empire apart. The borders in the Americas at this point in time remain fairly constant. The Maya Empire is thriving in its post-classic period, but is still nowhere near as powerful as it once was. The peoples of North and South America are unified by different cultures, but no set boundaries or large empires are established during this time. During the 1200s, Europe's borders remain relatively stable. However, the pressure being placed on Eastern Europe to fend off the Mongol threat depletes its resources. The schism within the church progresses. The empires of Europe begin to splinter as the century comes to an end. In the next 100 years, the map of this part of the world will look very different. And if that wasn't enough, an unseen enemy is about to murder 25 million people. 700 years ago, the Hundred Years' War breaks out between the kingdoms of France and England. At the same time, the Black Death sweeps across Europe, paying no mind to the borders of different countries. The bacterial agent that causes the bubonic plague kills indiscriminately. The groundwork for the Renaissance is set, and the Ottoman Empire begins to rise to greatness in the Middle East and North Africa. Although the Holy Roman Empire still exists, its power is starting to dwindle. There's now more autonomy between rulers in the empire, and new borders are drawn. With France and England at war with one another, their boundaries are constantly changing as territories are invaded and lands are lost. A consolidation of power in Eastern Asia has caused new empires to rise. The Yuan Dynasty now controls almost all of what will become China. The Yuan become the successors of the Mongol Empire of the previous century in this part of the world. The dynasty is founded by Kublai Khan, the grandson of Genghis Khan. This will be the start of the dynastic rulers of China, and its borders will shift only slightly from here on out. The Mongol Empire is completely broken up. The northwestern territory of Asia is now controlled by the Golden Horde, while the southwestern territories are in the hands of the Ilkhanate. In southern Asia, the Delhi Sultanate has risen to power and controls much of the area that will become India. This is one of the first times power has been consolidated to such an extent in the region. Islamic leaders rule the empire and its borders extend into the regions of Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Nepal. The Delhi Sultanate's power allowed them to repel the Mongol attacks of the previous century and maintain control over the region. 
Western Africa also sees a shift in borders during the 1300s, as the Ghana Empire falls and the Mali Empire takes its place. Both empires use the Niger River as the main artery for their lands. It is this river that made the transportation of resources possible. The borders of the Mali Empire extend further east than its predecessor, encompassing one of the largest cities in Africa, Timbuktu. These shifts in borders around the world changed the world map, but not drastically. It'd be a few more centuries before major transformations occurred, and empires would extend their influences across the globe. 600 years ago, Constantinople would fall, leaving the Ottoman Turks securing more land. The Hundred Years' War ends, but England is thrown into chaos as the War of the Roses commences. Islam spreads through Africa while Asian borders remain relatively stable, and in Americas, two empires are about to start their rise to greatness. Before the Middle East fractures into a number of different countries, the Timurid Empire reigns supreme. Its borders stretch from Turkey all the way into India. This will be one of the last empires ruled by the descendants of the Mongol invasion. Most of the borders in East Asia remain the same as the Ming Dynasty rises to power. In Eastern Europe, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth is established, creating one of the largest territories in the region. Interestingly, the Commonwealth has checks and balances put in place to make sure the monarchy does not have too much power. These regulations are maintained by the nobility. In a part of the world where monarchies reign supreme, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth experimented with a unique form of government reminiscent of the parliamentary government of the future. The rest of the European borders remain similar to what they were in the previous century. The Holy Roman Empire continues to lose influence. This allows for more and more new boundaries to be drawn within its own territory. In Central America, the Purépecha people control large amounts of land in northern Mexico. This may not be the largest empire the world has ever seen, but it sits in an important strategic position. The people of North America still have many unique cultural identities and are not unified, while the Central American countries are slowly starting to centralize their power. This means the Purépecha sit right between the two. However, their biggest adversary is growing in influence and will soon reach their borders. In the coming century, bloody battles will break out between the Purépecha and one of the most powerful Central American empires to ever exist. A similar consolidation of power is happening in the Andes Mountains of South America. As the 15th century comes to an end and the 16th century begins, the Americas will see a shift in power that rival even the Maya and Tiwanaku civilizations. 500 years ago, the Aztecs conquered the lands of Mexico and spread their influence across a huge portion of Central America. The Incas built Machu Picchu and a network of roads that crisscross their empire. In Europe, the age of exploration ramps up as ships sail across the world's ocean. The Ottoman Empire expands further and further into the Balkans, Eastern Europe, and the Middle East. In Asia, a new power arises in India, while China and Japan begin fighting over land that will become Korea. The Aztecs established their empire at Tenochtitlan, where the gods told them that they would witness an eagle on a cactus devouring a snake. This would later become the centerpiece for the Mexican flag. Tenochtitlan is constructed on a man-made island in the middle of Lake Texcoco, with three causeways leading from the mainland into the city. Giant pyramids and temples are built across the empire. The Aztecs now control most of central Mexico. This is the first time in several centuries that so much of Central America is united under a single ruler. The borders of the Aztec Empire are still growing when Hernando Cortes and his conquistadors ravage the land of Mexico and spread diseases that wipe out entire groups of indigenous people. Further south, the Inca Empire expands its territory into the Andes Mountains. The empire stretches from Colombia all the way up to Chile. This is the largest empire to ever be established in the Americas, and it's all built without writing systems or the use of a wheel. It's not that the Incas don't know how to construct or use a wheel, but that shape isn't useful in the rugged mountain paths of the Andes. Instead, they rely on sending messages using runners who follow a network of winding roads across the empire to communicate the will of the kings. In North America, the Iroquois Confederacy is spreading across the northeast section of what would become the United States. The Puebloan, Hohokam, and Mogollon cultures are thriving in the southwest. There are also a number of other tribes throughout North America, but all of those borders will be dismantled as Europeans begin to colonize the continent. In Africa, the Songhai Empire secures territory in the Sudan. At its peak, it was one of the largest empires in all of African history. It eventually incorporates the former Mali Empire into its borders. Trade routes are built, but the empire won't last forever. Soon the continent will be broken up into colonies by European powers. Europe splinters into more territories. Major powers of the time, like Denmark, Portugal, and Spain, began sending explorers across the globe to secure lands in the New World and beyond. By the end of the 1500s, Portugal is the largest colonial empire in the world. It has territory in almost every continent, and its power is growing. It is the location of Portugal and its monarchy's deep pockets that allow it to launch expedition after expedition. 
The world map is being redrawn every decade as European powers spread across the planet on the decks of state-of-the-art sailing vessels. 400 years ago, Spain and the Netherlands expand their empires worldwide and enjoy vast amounts of wealth from trade and the pillaging of resources from foreign lands. War breaks out across the globe as colonialism spreads and nations try to secure more land. The Edo Shogunate begins in Japan, unifying the central region of the island and beginning a long-lasting isolationist policy. The people of the Americas are decimated by European colonists and the diseases they carry with them. Some estimates suggest that around 20 million indigenous people died as a result of European disease. This would have been around 95% of the entire population of the Americas before contact. The Ottoman Empire expands its borders and now contains huge amounts of land in southeastern Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. The Ottomans control the only land route between North Africa and the Middle East into Europe. This makes them incredibly wealthy and powerful. Its capital of Constantinople, which is now known as Istanbul, governs the land surrounding the eastern Mediterranean Sea and is the main city that goods travel through in order to reach Europe. After the fall of the Ottoman Empire, this region of the world will not unify again under a single power. To the east of the Ottoman Empire, the Safavid Empire controls the rest of the Middle East. It's often considered the beginning of what will become modern-day Iran. In South Asia, the Mughal Empire is thriving in India, Afghanistan, and Kashmir. The empire is founded by a warrior named Babur who came from the land now occupied by Uzbekistan. He uses matchlock guns and cannons bought from the Ottoman Empire to secure his power. This will be another part of the world that will have its borders redrawn in the near future as European countries begin to colonize the region of the world. The borders of East Asia remain similar to the previous century, and Africa's kingdoms continue to maintain their boundaries. But European colonialization will soon encompass almost the entire continent and split its lands between different empires. The Iberian Union has unified much of Western Europe, including Spain and Portugal, into one great empire. A number of different councils rule the territories, but the main players are the Council of the Indies, the Council of Portugal, and the Council of Castile. The Union seemed like a good idea at the time and redraws the world map as the amount of land it controls grows, but the peace between the nations involved will not last and by the end of the century, the Iberian Union will be dissolved. However, another European power now controls more territory in North America than any other country in the world. The first French colonial empire extends from Canada all the way to Louisiana. France's borders in Europe have not changed much in the last few centuries, but they now have expanded beyond their European borders and carved out a chunk of land in the New World. 300 years ago, it's a time of revolution. The original colonies of the United States will gain independence from Britain. French citizens rebel against the monarchy in hopes of securing a voice of the people. The slave trade continues and displaces millions of people from Africa in one of the largest atrocities in human history. The Industrial Revolution begins, allowing European powers to spread even further across the globe. In the Americas, the United States is now its own nation consisting of land from Maine down to Georgia. However, France still controls much of the territory to the west and Spain maintains a hold on lands in the south. In South America, Portugal controls the eastern half of the continent while Spain controls the western half. The lands of the Amazon rainforest cannot be tamed, and the peoples who live there have likely never seen a European in their life. The Dano-Norwegian colonies control much of the far north, including Greenland, Iceland, and northern Europe. They also have key holdings sprinkled throughout the world. Most of Europe is bracing for war as Napoleon unifies the French people and fills their head with expansionist rhetoric. In East Asia, the Qing Dynasty reaches its height and encompasses an enormous amount of land. This will be the largest dynasty in Chinese history. In India, the Maratha Empire rules much of the central regions of the country and will be the last major empire run by people from the region before British colonialism spreads to their lands. 200 years ago, empires begin to fall. The Spanish, First French, Holy Roman, and Mughal empires begin to decline. They still maintain some colonies, but they are nothing compared to what they were at their height. However, new empires are now being built and expanded. In fact, the largest empire the world has ever known is working toward expanding its lands so that the sun will never set on its borders. France now controls not only more territory to its east in Europe, but also expanding its colonial holdings in Africa and parts of the Caribbean as well. Napoleon has become the emperor of France, and he's waging war across the continent. Colonies in the west and south of Africa are thriving. In South Africa, the Portuguese Empire controls a decent amount of land. They also maintain their control over eastern South America and their coastal colonies around the world. But in the coming century, almost every European empire will fall except one. The people of Africa fight back against their colonial oppressors. There are even lands that remain independent from all colonial influence. However, advanced weapons and technology coming from the European Industrial Revolution 
have made it incredibly difficult for the people of Africa to win on their own continent. The Zulu Kingdom still maintains control of its lands in South Africa, even as European powers try to take its territory away. In 1821, Mexico gains independence from Spain. It's now its own country and boasts massive amounts of territory, encompassing much of what would become the United States and Central America. However, war with the US and disputes among its people will lead to the Mexican Empire's downfall and eventually the redrawing of its borders into smaller countries. Fifty years after Mexico gained independence, Canada becomes a British dominion, giving the country more autonomy over its domestic matters. Now North America is beginning to draw borders that are reminiscent of the world map we have today. In 1803, the United States buys a huge amount of land from France in what comes to be known as the Louisiana Purchase. By the middle of the 19th century, the United States is at war with Mexico. The Mexican-American War concludes with the signing of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. This gives the United States a massive amount of land in the Southwest. By the end of the 1800s, the continental US border looks very similar to how it does today. In South America, Brazil gains its independence in 1822, while maintaining control over much of the eastern part of the continent. Around the same time, Spain loses control of all of its colonies on the continent. It will still be a while before South American borders are drawn as they currently are, but the continent is no longer under imperial occupation. Russia has expanded its control across the planet. It now contains territory in northern Asia, Europe, and even North America. Its borders are massive, and countless different cultures and ethnicities are contained within it, including what would later become Alaska 100 years ago. The world map is finally starting to look like it does today. It will still take two world wars and a number of empires to collapse, but by the end of the 1900s, most of the borders we currently have are defined. The largest empire that's ever existed reaches its peak in the early 1900s. The British Empire spans the entire globe and consists of over 25% of the world's total landmass. By the end of the century, it will consist of a few colonies and territories, but nothing to the extent of what it was at the start. At the turn of the century, there are fewer countries in Europe than there are today. Austria, Hungary, and Germany dominate Eastern Europe, while Russia maintains its border to the east. After the World Wars and the collapse of the Soviet Union, Europe will look almost identical to the layout it has today. In East Asia, two main countries fight for power. It is Japan that secures the most territory. The island nation expands its empire into the Asian mainland. There are brutal campaigns in Korea and China as they try to fight off the Japanese invasion. After World War II comes to an end, East Asian borders are divided into a similar structure as we see today. However, there will still be slight shifts during the Korean and Vietnam Wars. Most African countries established their borders in the earlier middle of the 20th century. Colonial European powers have been kicked out of many lands. However, the damage has been done. The people of the continent have been mistreated and displaced for so long that the building of the nations of Africa will be a long and tedious journey. Even today, the effects of European colonialism are felt on the continent of Africa and around the world. By 1900 and the decades to follow, the borders of South America are established. The distance between the continent and its European colonizers made it slightly easier for the countries in this part of the world to gain independence and begin governing themselves. North America also finalizes much of its current borders early in the 1900s. However, it isn't until January 1959 that Alaska becomes a state, and in August that same year, Hawaii is added as the 50th state. Today, Borders have changed throughout history, and they're still changing today. Currently, Russia is invading Ukraine, and it looks like by the end of the conflict, the borders of these two countries, if not more, will be different than they were at the beginning of 2022. Another way the scenario could turn out is that it launches us into World War III, which would inevitably result in redrawing many parts of the world map as fighting breaks out across the planet. Only time will tell what the map looks like in the future, but if the past is any indication, the borders of the future will look very different than the borders of today. Now watch easiest and hardest countries to take over, or check out why these countries are almost impossible to visit.